We're back for segment three. We're going to be talking a little bit about manufacturing uh, things today, primarily assembly orders versus production. So let's say, Ken, that I am Brickstone Brewery. Would I use assembly orders or production orders to create this pretty good beer? This is a question that we answer all the time for people, right? In today's day and age, most small and mid-sized businesses that we're working with, if they have a product, they're not simply just distributing the product, right? They're not just bringing it in and sending it out, right? They're adding value to it. And usually that's through some sort of a process, whether it's an assembly process or a manufacturing process. So inevitably it leads to this discussion of well, I see that Business Central has assembly orders and then it has production orders. What are the differences between those two and, and what which is right for me? Which is right for me. Yeah. Right. So let's go through a list and we'll compare the features that are included within each of these different processes. Okay. And then we'll answer your question about Brickstone. Okay. To Maybe see we can talk about the three or four main if they can differences uh, that'll Yeah. Right. We'll see we'll see what, what if we if we can agree uh, of which they should use. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So the first thing is from a licensing standpoint, right? This nothing to do with the product itself and the features, but from mm -hmm. a licensing standpoint, the reason that people would want to try to use assembly is because it's included within the essentials package, oh, gotcha. right? Which has a lower per user price point. Okay. If you utilize the, the production orders or manufacturing capabilities, that requires a premium license. So there's an extra Ooh, charge yeah. for all of your users if you're gonna use the production or manufacturing functionality. Okay. Right? So that's the, that's the first thing. And that's why we, it's important for us to, when we work with a prospect, to make sure we know the answer to that up front. Definitely. Right? Because we don't want to, you know, go to a premium solution when we, when we don't need to. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, so we try to figure this out. So let's talk about a comparison of the two. So, so the ability to assign bill of material or, or components for a finished good item. That's available in both assembly and in manufacturing. Okay. Okay. The ability to assign labor cost to a finished good item, that also is available under both assembly and manufacturing, although how that gets done is a little bit different. Okay. okay. Uh, the ability to roll up a cost for a finished good item Again, available under both assembly and manufacturing. Okay. Right? And the ability to define if I'm going to replenish an item either as a made to stock part or made to order part. Also available under both models. Okay. So, so far. It's pretty, they're pretty similar. They're pretty similar, yeah. right? I can create a bill of material. I can assign a labor component. I can roll mm -hmm. up a, a, a cost, a standard cost, if you will. And I can define how I want to replenish this. Okay. Now we're, is where we get into some of the some of the differences. So, with assembly, we have what we call assemble to order or assemble to stock. So when you set up this item, you, you define how you're going to assemble it. And assemble to order, while you're entering your sales order, the system will automatically generate on the fly a, a, an assembly order behind the scenes. And then as you tell the system that you're shipping it, it will automatically consume the raw materials that were required to make it, output the finished good, and then ship it. Very nice, right. automatically, huh? Right. Good. With a production order over on the manufacturing side, there is a button where from the sales order, you can hit a button to create a production order, but then those production order steps have to be completed independently okay. of shipping the sales order. So there, that's a, a little bit a of bit a difference different. there. Yeah. Now, some of the other differences also include if any of the operations that you're doing 
require the use of an outside processor or subcontract vendor, mm -hmm. that is not supported with assembly. So okay. for that, you would have to go to the manufacturing module. So that's clear cut then? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So the question is, do you ever send anything out yes. that's, that's partially yes. made where someone else is doing something to it and sending it back? If they say yes, we say that's you are you're in manufacturing. Okay. Right. The other thing is, do you need to record and track in the system the actual amount of time or labor spent to complete an operation? If you do. If you do, that is manufacturing. Okay. Because what assembly is gonna do, it's just gonna take a standard labor factor that you've added to that assembly item yeah. and apply that as a fixed, almost like a fixed cost per item every time. Okay. Right? So to track labor. It's another clear cut feature. That's clear cut <laughs> manufacturing. Okay. The other thing is if you need to be able to track actual component consumption quantity, that is also clear cut manufacturing. So, so what do you mean by component? Yeah. Right, so, so let's say I'm making this beer here and um, you know, I'm, I'm part of the process is putting in the yeast mm -hmm. into the beer. So um, with assembly orders, I would have to assign up front exactly how much yeast goes into each gallon or whatever quantity of beer I'm making and then the system would automatically consume that amount of yeast out of my inventory okay. with manufacturing I tell it exactly how much yeast did I use in this production order or batch okay. uh, that I'm making right um, so for 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 production processes where I have a more variability in how many pieces I'm using mm -hmm. or maybe I have to scrap I may often have to scrap more pieces against a production order. Uh, that is where I'm, I'm talking more manufacturing. So it almost seems like, <clears throat> I think I might have this wrong, but it seems like high production pieces, well, I guess would still be manufacturing, but tend to have assembly qualities, I guess? Correct. Meaning well, I think to your point, it can be tricky. Okay. Right? So. Um, you know, where, where you have a, a variable amount of scrap, though. Right, the, the variable part is... Is where you're, you're, right. you're talking manufacturing. Okay. So, for, as an example, um, well, we'll stick with the beer example, right? Why if not? Actually, so putting together this six-pack right here of, of Brickstone Hazed Up IPA, right, is there's actually multiple layers of production that has to go on, right? First, I have to make the wort. Mm -hmm. Then I have to brew the beer, and now I have beer. Right. Then I have to put the beer into cans. Mm -hmm. Then I have to put the cans of beer into six packs, right? So the canning, maybe that's one step. Yeah. Either way, I have multiple processes there. Yeah. Um, so, with an assembly order, I would have to tell the system, okay, how many cans of beer have I made? And when I'm done, it back flushes the exact number of ounces of beer, labels, and cans, okay. and six pack uh, holders, right? Mm -hmm. So in that case, if I have scrap where some cans maybe get scratched or dented, uh, and then I have to report that separately, that's where I get into manufacturing. Okay. Right. Um, also, you have to do that all at once. So this is the other big differentiator. With assembly, when I tell it how many pieces I've made, and I post that quantity on the assembly order, that is the moment where it consumes my raw materials based on those fixed quantities, mm -hmm. right? Oftentimes, that is not good enough. Okay. Many times in a manufacturing environment where you have a process that takes, let's say, several days, 
they need to consume the raw materials on day one to start the process. Okay. But they may not report output against that production order for many days or even weeks or months later. Okay. So if you have to, so, they, so the differentiator is if you need to report the consumption of raw materials separately from the output of the finished good, that means you're in the manufacturing module. Clear cut. If you can, if you just say, you know what, at the point where I tell it how many I made, that's where we can relieve the raw materials and components, then maybe assembly will work for you. Okay. okay. Um, the other thing is, the, big, the last big piece is overall scheduling. With assembly, you simply are assigning a fixed amount of labor or overhead cost into the item that you're assembling. Mm -hmm. But there really is no scheduling capabilities. With manufacturing, you have the ability to create work centers or machine, even machine centers within the work centers. Right. And then each work center or machine center can be scheduled. You can track a finite capacity for each of those and then schedule the production processes right based on that available capacity and, and analyze where are you, if you're in infinite capacity, where are you over your capacity? What do I need to do to fix this? Okay. Right. And, and so <coughs> where we typically see people either, you know, going to clear cut manufacturing, number one is probably the ability to schedule production. Yeah. Right. Effectively. That means you're in manufacturing. Two is the ability to, record my material and labor consumption separately from my output. Okay. So those are those are the two areas where we typically see people going to, to So then am I wrong for saying Brickstone Brewery beer, whatever it is, manufacturing? Brickstone definitely we would recommend as a manufacturing process. Right. So now what if I were to say I still want to do it as assemblies? Is it possible to do it? It is possible. If you understand these differences between assembly orders and manufacturing, it is possible. Just makes it a little uh, bit harder. It's a little bit more difficult. The planning tools, right, are not as robust with right. assembly. It's gonna require some level of manual uh, or outside the system, you know, uh, tracking. Okay. Uh, so for example, uh, right, with, with this six pack of beer that we're sitting here looking at, right, I really have multiple production departments, or what we, we might call work center groups. Yeah. I have the, the, the brewing of the beer, right. which takes place over in the brewery section, and they, they're not brewing cans of beer, right? No. They're, they're just... brewing a giant batch, yeah. right? That's a production order. They're making 500 gallons of this in a batch. So they need to probably track the lots of material that they put into that batch. So that would be a production order. Then you probably have a completely separate department. Once they're done making that batch, you have a bottling department. Right. The bottling department is responsible for managing their schedule and then consuming the beer that got made by the brewery mm -hmm. and they're gonna report how many bottles or cans did they produce okay. and get completed, right? And so you've got these different scheduling operations that have to go on. You also have the, the dependencies, right? I need to know if I'm managing the bottling department and I'm gonna uh, bottle some of this Omega Haze that I have the beer available right. for me to use. If that beer isn't scheduled till next Tuesday, well then I probably can't bottle it yeah. until after that. So with manufacturing, you have a lot better visibility into those dependencies uh, than with assembly orders. So when you're actually bottling, bringing the beer and the, and the bottle together, is that considered assembling though? It could be. Okay. Right? Could be. <laughs> it could be. So 
let's assume that part of the beer production process, because that takes weeks, mm -hmm. right? So there are multiple operations or steps that have to get done. That has to be defined in a manufacturing routing for scheduling purposes, okay. right? Because I brew it, it has to cook for a few hours, then I have to let it cool, then I have to transfer it, then yeah. it has to sit there and ferment, right? Right. So that is a process, that production order is gonna sit out there for weeks. I need to consume the raw materials at the moment I put them into the vat mm -hmm. so that my on-hand raw material is updated correctly. But I'm not gonna output that beer into finished goods as available until it's completed the fermentation cycle. Okay. Right? Um, but now, let's say that I'm in the bottling department. Can't I just say, because maybe there is a fixed level or low level of scrap in the number of labels and cans and ounces of beer that I'm putting into each can. Okay. That could be an assembly order. So at the end of the shift, all I do is I go, I create an assembly order, I tell it how many cans of the hazy, mega hazy that I make, and it automatically removes X 12 ounces per can, That's great, yeah. plus one label, plus one can, for, right, for okay. each one I produced. So that's assembly. That could work, right. Our argument would probably be, why implement two separate processes? Right. Why, why put in place one set of processes and documents, right, and data for one part of your production mm -hmm. process, which would be the, the beer brewing, and a separate, whole separate process instead of documents and reports and data for the bottling. Yeah. So what we generally would do is work with the customer to say, to qualify them, to say, are there any elements of your, manufacture, of, of your process where you require manufacturing? And if you do require manufacturing, then most likely it makes sense to just use manufacturing for all of your assembly. So manufacturing takes processes. takes uh, I won't say pressing, but takes uh, or it is the the, the pressing of it. So if, if you have manufacturing and, and assembly, you think you do, it should just all be manufacturing. Correct. Generally, generally that is the case. Okay. Uh, the only other time would be a tr the only other exception to that would be a true kidding environment where they are literally doing the assemble to order, where they're never really building an order or working off an order. It's just the fact that they've pulled these items out of stock. We're going to consume the components and deliver a, quote, kit uh, to the customer. Very nice. So that's kind of our process and, and how we go through it. Um, you know, every company is unique. Uh, they have different expectations and different requirements. We'll, we work with them to define what the best process is. Uh, and this is where I think we add value mm -hmm. to make sure that those processes are efficient. Last little point is, going back to our, our example here with brewing beer, the br beer brewing process could be a more um, direct or we call uh, you know actual costing, where we're consuming a specific number of pounds of oats and wheat and malt whatever it is, right. barley. Whereas the canning process, we do, even though we're using the more extensive manufacturing functionality, we can set up those items to back flush. So from an That's end important. user's perspective, even though we're using manufacturing, we can make it as simple as an assembly order right. for those specific items that are getting produced. So take away when you hear manufacturing, don't always assume that it's as complicated or way more complicated than assembly. Correct. The, the system can be set up. We have a customer, they literally do that. When they're done with the, making uh, a batch of product, they will go in, they'll create a new production order, they tell it the quantity that they made, they refresh it with the components and routing that's expected, and they finish it. And we back flush all of the expected labor and material costs and output that quantity of finished goods. Very, very nice. So hopefully that uh, helps people understand the difference between manufacturing and assembly. Uh, I believe it does. There's what three or four clear-cut, clear-cut things that'll that'll uh, define which one is your is for you. But um, other than that, anything yep. else? All right, and hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully it didn't muddy the waters.
uh, no, as much as it cleared it up. <laughs> cleared it up. <laughs> and I enjoyed using the example of the beer. Yep. Uh, Definitely a manufacturing company. Thank you for uh, bringing, <laughs> using that. 